Basic blueprint reading, parts of a print, part one. Gary Pace, P-E-C-W-I, TexasWeldingEngineering.com. Okay, I scavenged most of these slides and whatnot out of blueprint reading and sketching. It's a Navy book, NAVED TRA 10 or 14040, and Open Oregon Press Books Pub um, blue, Basic Blueprint Reading by Rick Costin. These are both entry-level documents. You can find them on the internet. You can, they're, none of them, are, neither one of them is copyrighted. Poach away, because I gave you permission, and that's really worth it. But anyways, from my reading, there's no copyright on any of it, so run wild. Okay, we're going to talk about parts of a print. Prints and construction drawings contain information blocks which can contain information such as finish marks, notes, specification, legends, and symbols that you may find on a blueprint. So here's just a very simple example of a blueprint. And you can see in the bottom right hand corner we've got some information such as you know the title, the drawing number, who it was drawn by, the revision, the date, a lot of information. So we're going to cover these blocks, these information blocks, and the different parts of a blueprint. The draftsman uses information blocks to give the reader additional information about materials, specifications, and so forth that are not shown in the blueprint or that may need additional explanation. The draftsman may leave some blocks blank if the information in that block is not needed. So we're going to talk about some of these information blocks. This would be an example of an information block. I pulled this out of a military manual on blueprint reading. But you can see there's a lot of different blocks containing specific pieces of information that might be needed by the person reading the print. Title block. The title block is located in the lower right corner of all blueprints and drawings and is prepared according to specifications. It contains the drawing number, the name of the part or assembly that it represents, and all information required to identify the part or assembly. It also includes the name and address of the agency or organization preparing the drawing. So this would be a very basic title block. It's just Part 1, drawn by Fred Durfee on 10 2 2014 and all dimensions are in inches. This would be just a very basic title block. But the title block is like the birth certificate or a passport for a document. So it tells us who it is, where it's from, gives us all the relevant information, who drew it. And then if we have an issue when we're trying to build something, we know who designed it and who we need to go talk to. Title blocks. Title, name, date, units. Optional can be company name, sheet number, scale, tolerances, material finish, all that kind of stuff. When you're putting these drawings together, whoever's going to do it is going to follow their company standards. All companies have a standard for what kind of drawings they're putting together. So here would be a, another um, Example of a title block. You can see that we've got it down there in the right lower right hand corner and it's got a little information on it. And it all tells us the material, the scale, who drew it, the name of it, um, what it's going to, you know, the dimensions are in inches, the date it was drawn, all that information's down there. So this helps us keep track of our drawings. Here's another example of a title block um, for a part. Just giving you a couple of different examples here. You know, gives you the drawing number and just whatever other information you're going to need. A revision block. This is probably one of the most important block numbers on a drawing. If the designer has had to make a change to a print, this is called a revision. If a revision has been made to the drawing, the revision block will be on the print, usually near the title block. All revisions 
in this block are identified by a letter and or a number and a brief description of the revision. A revi revised drawing is shown by the addition of a letter or number to the original number. When a print is revised, the letter A in the revision block is replaced by the letter B and so forth. Or Rev01, Rev02, and so on. So this would be like if you handed in your book report to your teacher, the first one would be, you know, Stephen's book report 01. And then you hand it in again after because you got to do some corrections. She didn't like how you were, you know, finished the book report or whatever. You had spelling errors. You make the corrections, you hand it back in. Okay, now it's revision two. And you forgot some other stuff and you need to do it a little more. Then the third one's revision three. Same with drawings. A lot of times drawings will get revised. Very rarely does a is the first drawing that you work with the last drawing you're going to work with. There's a lot of times there's mistakes or things will change or the person designing it forgot something. So you're going to have to revise the drawing. Here's another example of some revision blocks. Snag these from the USN. You can see on that bottom one where we've got the notes, where it's telling us the revisions, but then you're also, the drawing also has what got changed on it. So, okay, we've corrected ASI drawing number in general note number 14. All right, deleted all references to P&L numbers. The, the person that revises the drawing is going to put in the revision block what got changed, so you don't have to look around and figure out what did they change? Drawing number. So this would be like your, your driver's license number, or your student ID. Each blueprint has a drawing number which appears in a block in the lower right corner of the title block. The drawing number can be shown in other places. Um, near the top borderline, in the upper corner, or on the reverse side at the other end, so it will be visible when the drawing is rolled. On blueprints with more than one sheet, the information in the number block shows the sheet number and the number of sheets in the series. So a lot of blueprints, you might need five, five sheets with that drawing. So you'd have one of one, one of two, one of three, or three of three, or three of five. So it just depends on how they're numbering it. So a lot of blueprints, it's one drawing might have four pages. So it would be page 1 of 4, 2 of 4, 3 of 4, 4 of 4. So we need to look out for drawing numbers when they're out there in the real world. So here's an example of a drawing number. You can see it's, you know, 1, 1, 6, 7, 4, 2, 0. That's the drawing number. And you can see a little to the bottom, in the bottom right hand of that uh, box, it says sheet one of one, so we've only got one sheet. We don't have two sheets. Sometimes you might have five sheets or ten sheets, so it would be sheet three of ten or three of fourteen. Just however many drawings it takes to communicate the information on what they need you to build. Okay, so we covered information blocks, title blocks, revision blocks, and drawing numbers.